Good morning, good morning, good morning, my beautiful people. It is your boy, Reverend JB, back with another awesome battle plan for success. As y'all see, I am rocking my mermaid dead shirt in honor of my daughters. I love y'all and daddy misses y'all. Anyway, damn, I look good today, but look at y'all. <laughs> anyway, my beautiful people, welcome to the live broadcast. <laughs> I am Reverend JB, just in case you don't know me. I am the senior pastor of Jesus Christ Soldier Ministries. Oh, there's some paper in the office. Um, there's pencil in the office as well, too. I am also the, uh, the, 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 the brains and the operation behind the wonderful love of life. Now, I'm just playing. That's Jesus. I just want to throw a little joke in it this morning. Today's battle plan is called Influences. Now, this is a very important battle plan today because we're going to talk about the effects of influences in your life. And if you ain't careful how influences can cause you to have situations, issues, and problems. But if you have the correct influences, my beautiful people, I tell you what, everything will work out great, fine, and lovely. The good Lord will shh, hot dog make your life easy and show you the way. All right. Now, we're going to try a different prayer technique today, so let me explain this. It's called an internal prayer. So, I won't be, I won't be showing you an external prayer today uh, as far as me speaking out loud. I'm going to show you how to internally pray. For, to internally pray, <clears throat> excuse me, to internally pray helps you get closer to Jesus and become part of the unit and to do it the right way. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about something that you want to pray about. And I want you to think about something that you love and, and cherish when you pray. Because we're going to pray a happy prayer today. And I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, inside your mind today, inside your mind, and inside your heart. I want you to, I want you to pray, but I want you to think about what you want to pray about from your heart. Because the Bible tells us that a Lord won't answer an unsincere prayer. And I have recently learned that the best way to have a perfect, sincere prayer is to come from the heart. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Like, um, to think about it as if it's already come to pass or if it's already happened. So if you want a new car, I want you to think about what it's like to drive around in that new car. I want you to... Think about the new car as if it's already here. It's already sitting in your driveway. Whatever it is you need or desire uh, that is in within the lowest will, uh, think about it and focus on it. And then I want you to pray about it. So I love y'all. And I love my broadcast. And I love my beautiful first family. And all of you wonderful, wonderful members of Jesus Christ Soldier Ministries. So I'm going to focus on that. And I am going to pray. All right, my beautiful people. <laughs> Best part about internal prayers, you can pray whatever you want. And you ain't got to worry about upsetting nobody. All right. Let's look at the statement that I, first statement I want you to write down for the day. You are what you allow. You are what you allow. This is the one statement that, that'll wrap up this whole battle plan. And this is important because whatever you allow yourself to be around whatever you allow yourself to hear whatever you allow yourself to see whatever you allow yourself to be consumed by is what in all means in every shape way or form that is exactly what you are you will become that's the whole point behind that message the whole statement so right now you are what you allow and it comes to whatever I see hear or take in now, y'all know I like to get a little personal and have a little fun. So, here's what I want to tell you what I've learned from my fasting from social media. Here's what I've learned from my fasting from social media. I've learned that life will continue. Life 
it goes on. Life is full of joy and happiness when you go out there and you start to live a realistic life. When you start to live a life that is not made up. Because see, social media of all forms allows us to be what we think we should be. It does not allow us, you know, it gives us the freedom to pretend to be something that we are not. And this is important because Satan will take the truth and do a slight twist on it like we do on social media and have you believing something that is completely false and not true. Now, this is significant to me because I've also learned that sometimes in life, if you take away all the negative influences and all the stuff that causes you pain, like sex, violence, um... And all kind of other things. You become a much happier person. You become a person full of joy. So you got to be careful about what you allow yourself to see. And what you allow yourself to hear. Because whether you know it or not. It subconsciously becomes part of who you are. It becomes part of your essence. So write this down. If I want a clear and happy Christ like emphasis and be more like Jesus and become one with Jesus and the universe, then I must surround myself with things and consume things and allow myself to see things that are like Jesus. So that's all right. Find you a favorite preacher, even if it ain't me and you just happen to catch me every Sunday because I broadcast after regular church hours and, <laughs> you know, you have a little fun because I have a little wild and craziness. Find whatever you need, whether it be songs. If you're a person and you just like music, then by all means, surround yourself with gospel music or music that helps you think about the Lord and helps you feel better and helps you feel motivated and helps you feel joy that lifts your spirit. Sometimes you ain't the kind of person that want to sit there and listen to somebody talk all the time. Believe it or not, I got a lot of people like that. They love me because I get straight to the point. I'm honest, I'm truthful, and I'm liable to tell you exactly how I feel when I want to feel it. I got a question for you, though. What if you woke up one day and realized that everything you knew was a lie? Would you keep living? Yeah. Let me say that for you one more time. What if you woke up one day and realized everything that you knew was a lie? Would you keep living? Now, let's look at the definition of the word influences. First, we're going to look at the first person point of view, which is you yourself. And then we're going to look at the third person. The definition of influence is uh, the capability to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the effects of itself. So in other words, my beautiful people, it, the definition of an influence from first person point of view from yourself is being able to uh, look at it like this. Make somebody or convince somebody to do something that you want them to do. Now this is most often found everywhere we look in life. Because we use our, our influences, our characters, our smiles, our jokes, our laughter, our, our gifts, our happiness, or whatever the good Lord done blessed us with, with uh, to, to get what we want. This is most commonly found in strip clubs. Women know that their bodies are, 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 are attractive to men, so what they do is they go work in a strip club to obtain money. This is in every... Uh, profession there is even down to prostitution and my beautiful people prostitution has been around in just as long as time itself has it's been there since the biblical days Mary Magdalene was one of the people that, that the Lord loved the most so write this down regardless of what your situation is or status in life or chosen profession the Lord still loves you you are still one with the good Lord now, here's uh, influence from the third person point of view. Now, this is from outside in. This is from society to you. It says having the influence on another person. Here's, a, here's, a, here's an example. Social behaviors influence criminal behavior. This is, okay, this is most commonly found, especially, and you hear this. I'm the way I am because of the environment in which I live. <laughs> Write this down. And I want you to understand this. All because I started at the bottom doesn't mean I have to stay at the bottom. 
And if I, even though I came from the hood, I ain't got the state in the hood. Write that down. I want you to fully understand that, my beautiful people. Because wherever you start necessarily does not mean that's where you finish. It's all about the choice. It's all about whether you allow yourself to obtain the influences to get yourself out of them circumstances. Now, when I say influence, I mean knowledge, the wisdom, the courage, the dedication, the love, the, the motivation to get to where the good Lord wants you to get to and what you feel on the inside. Write this down. The only person that can stop me from achieving is myself. Now, my beautiful people, let's see what the toolbox says, the, the word of God says about influences. Let's turn to Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 reads, do not do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Put a check mark by that one with a star. That's not the verse of the day, but I want you to keep that in your mind. I want you to motivate that. This tells us a couple of things. This tells us one that don't allow your don't allow someone to lie to you. Bad people. And when I say bad people, I'm talking about negative people, liars, trickers, people who do things that you don't agree with will change you to be like them. This dog is saying, be careful of the company you keep because you'll end up just like it. My granny used to say this all the time. Write this down. If you lay down with dogs, you're going to wake up with fleas. Here's another most common nowadays analogy. Two birds of a feather flock together. So, this is important because if you hang around people that, that do things uh, a certain way or act a certain kind of way and it's negative and people don't like it, then guess what, my beautiful people? They are automatically going to associate you uh, with those people. And here's a, here's, a, here's a better way to say it, then I'm going to move on to my next point. You are guilty by association. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Write that down. You are what you hang around. This also tells us that this also talks about anything in life that causes you to change your mind or your heart to do what is wrong. Now this is TV. This is video games. This is cell phones. This is social media. Anything that will tell you and, and convince you over a span of time. You must understand something. That when somebody's trying to change your mind, they're not going to just come at you all at once. What they're going to do is they're going to take baby steps. <laughs> Write this down. They're going to People will take baby steps to get you to do what they want you to do. I'm going to just stand here and smile on that one. Because see, the smile is very, it's very influ influential. Because <laughs> I like that. People will take baby steps to cause you to commit wrong and to do wrong. It's like this, especially in school systems. It's called peer pressure. Peer pressure is like this. I'm gone. Take a puff of this cigarette. It ain't gonna bother nothing. A girl, you know you wanna take that drink. Come on, girl, get loose. You you too busy hot dog going to college, getting your education, building something of yourself, making yourself great, making yourself magnificent. Oh girl, you need to relax, unwind a little bit. Go on, go on, drink this. Oh girl, that dude keep liking you and uh uh my beautiful, beautiful young women, let me help you understand something. A wolf can be in sheep's clothing. Now, all because we live in a society where we believe that money is everything and that status is everything. And we no longer judge a man by the content of his character. We, we judge a man by the content of his wallet. We judge a man by the vehicle that he drives and the clothes that he put on his feet. Now I'm going to try not to cuss when I say these next couple of lines, but I just want you to know there's a lot of men out here in this world that are real good at putting on a Woo! Smoke screen. They are real good at making you think they one way, doing they are when they are another. If you pay attention to the teachings, this is commonly found in the battle plan. You got to be careful what you're looking at. You got to be careful how you judge a book by its cover. See, that, that saying is important because 
uh, on the outside, somebody gonna make it look like they got it going on. Or somebody's gonna make it seem like their life is really bad because of somebody else. But then once you step in the kitchen and get to cooking and maintaining with that person, you're gonna realize <laughs> two things. That one, they ain't got it going on, and that person that's running around here with a sob story, they are the ones causing their own pain. They are the ones causing their own suffering. And my beautiful women, let me, I mean my beautiful, magnificent, strong, intelligent, handsome men, let me help you understand something. Uh, a no good woman will do everything in her power to entice you. This is also commonly found in the Bible when it talks about Jezebel and the red, and the red sash in the window. Don't worry, I'm going to pause, I'm going to turn, I'm going to twist. Cause I want you to get to I want you to understand this. Ah, uh, a uh, no good woman will do everything that that your good woman is refusing to do right now, and we think she's not doing it because she don't love us. But what we don't realize is she ain't doing it because she tired. <laughs> she frustrated. She aggravated. We ain't doing what we supposed to be doing. Therefore, uh, she ain't got the energy or the effort to do what needs uh, to be done for our desires. Mm-hmm. But see, that Jezebel, that woman that's walking around with them nice clothes on, got that makeup on, talk real sweet, laugh and giggle at everything you got to say, whether it's funny or not. And she mesmerizing. She giving you that eye contact. Now, I I stress this point because this is important. Because this is all about morals and and bad company. I want you to get the spectrum of what bad company is. Let's move on to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Iron sharp as iron, and one man sharp as another. Now, this is important because it tells us straight on Jump Street that others can make you better. So, write this down, my beautiful people. Iron sharpens iron. And if I want to be sharp and I want to be better, then I must hang around people doing better than me. That's got more money than me. That are more intelligent than me. That know a whole lot more about things that I want to know. Now, I'm going to put this on the most simplest level. That is all school is. College. Trade school. You are learning from people, especially in trade school, that are out there in the field doing the work. They are giving you the shortcuts. They are giving you the secrets. They are giving you the small details to get you on the same level as them. But see, you are learning. Therefore, you can take the knowledge that they max out that they give you and you can add on to it. You can make it multiply. You can become better than where they were. And see, that's why I tell you, you got to be careful who you hang around. And remember, if I want to do better, I got to get around people doing better. If you want to get out the hood, then guess what, my beautiful people? You got to change your outfit. You got to tighten up your talk. You got to straighten up your walk. And you got to get out the hood. You got to change your dialect. You got to increase your vernacular. You got to not, not, this is not, this is not putting on a smoke screen. This is not being something. This is about self-education. Write this down. Self-education and self-improvement is the keys to greater success. Because all these things, self-education and self-improvement requires two things. It requires discipline and it requires education. And if you disciplined and you get the education, you can always change your circumstance. Amen. Now, let's move on to Proverbs Chapter 13, verse 20. Whoever walks with the wise man becomes wise. But whoever... But the company of a fool will suffer. Will make you suffer, really. This is real simple. If you hang around someone who is smart and together, you will become like them. I just said that. Hey, Chris, welcome to the broadcast, man. I'm glad you can make it to today's service. 
Uh, here's the next thing I want you to remember. If you and write this and put a check mark by this, and I want you to really, really pay attention to this next one. If you hang with someone that is foolish, you are doing yourself harm, and you will mess up everything good that's going on in your life. <sighs> Cause you gonna turn around, and you what's gonna happen is you gonna be up here. You up here, you doing good, you doing fantastic. But that one friend from the past, they're going to come along and say, Hey, man, I want to get on your level. I want to be where you at. But what happens is they don't change their circumstance. They ain't trying to change. They still doing the same thing they were doing 15 years ago. But you like, no, nah, that's my partner. That's my road dog. That's the person I hang with. They got my back. They my A1, they one. You know what I'm saying? They my... They my peoples. I got to bring them with me. Write this down. All because you doing good and you are ascending. That don't mean you're supposed to bring everybody with you. As, as Pastor John Grace say, write this down. As you go to a different elevation, the air is going to get thinner. Therefore, there ain't going to be enough air for everybody. So sometimes you got to say bye-bye, boo-boo. Get them out my face. And you got to leave them behind. Because let me tell you why this is. Let me tell you why. Let me just de de deviate from a battle plan for just a second and give you a real life lesson. They see you motivate. They see you going. They see you educating yourself. They see you changing your circumstance. They see you living. They see you enjoying life. They see you motive educating yourself. They see you carrying the books. They see you in your house. They see you driving a different car. They got the same resources and the same capabilities that you got. Maybe even better. But they choose not to. That's why you got to leave certain people behind. You got to do different things. Because if you ain't careful, that influence from that person is going to cause you to go downhill. You're going to lose it all. Let's move on before I get hype. I done got hype. Woo! Let's move on to... First Peter chapter three, chapter three, verse fifteen. First Peter chapter three, verse fifteen. But in your heart honor honor Christ as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a, for a reason for the hope that is in you. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to change that word defense just for a second. And I want to give you another idea of what defense is. Defense on the football team is the ability to stand firm and to protect your end zone. Uh, when, when somebody's under attack, they are putting up a defense. So this does not mean that you need to be overly aggressive. Write this down. Defense basically means that you are going to stand firm, that you are going to stand strong. Now, this is now here's what the scripture is telling us in Peter, First Peter. Honor Jesus in your heart all day long, every day. Carry him here, cause this can be manipulated. Write this down. My mind can change like the wind, but my heart is always the same. That's why the Lord tells us that if a man is in his heart a certain way, then that, that is the way the man is. That is not a direct quote from the scripture. That is JB's interpretation of what he gave me in the scripture. Now, this is also important because what it tells us is when, uh, when you do take a stance against somebody that wants to question your uh, hope and your joy and your happiness and why you have it. What this tells us is we must do it with respect and care. Because remember this, the word tells us that harsh words incite wrath. But kind words dissipate anger. So, when somebody comes to ask you why you got the hope and the joy and the happiness in your life, don't be like a mother, I got Jesus. No. What you want to do is you want to you help them understand why you got that happiness. Why you smiling. Why you full of joy. You want to make them come and understand and learn what you've learned. 
Let's look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, the next verse, verse 16. I know y'all thinking y'all said that's crazy, but the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Jesus broke it down to me so I can get a little bit more detail with each verse. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Let me read that for you one more time. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who reveal and revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Now, this is real simple. Live your life by the teachings of Jesus and be at peace so that when others talk down to you and trash you for what you believe, they will look foolish. Because you ever noticed that when we was back in school, my beautiful people, and you were living life and you got that one person that never bothered nobody. They just stayed to themselves. They did their own thing. But then when somebody got to picking on them or messing with them, somebody would always walk up and say, hey man, just leave them alone. They ain't bothering you. Why are you bullying that person? Why are you messing with that person? That person ain't done nothing to you. That person don't never do nothing to nobody. Mm-hmm. Be that person. Don't be so quick to be the eye of the party. Don't be so quick to want to be all up in everything. Like my granny used to say, mind your business. So if it don't pertain to you, don't get involved in it. Let's move on to chapter uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. It's called salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown and trampled under people's feet. Now, uh, now, my beautiful people, I want you to pay attention to this verse. I want you to put another check mark and a star by this one. I want you to fully understand what the scripture is saying. Basically, when it says that you are the salt of the earth, you are everything great in Jesus. Because mm-hmm. see, when you were Jesus, you are everything great. You may make mistakes externally, but your divine heavenly spirit is great and fantastic. But if you allow someone or something to take it from you, then how are you going to remember how great you are? If you allow somebody to take away the greatness and everything that you are in Christ, let me say it for you one more time. How are you going to remember how great you are and who you are. For remember, my beautiful people, we are the sons and the daughter of the living Father. We are kings and queens in our Father's kingdom. But if you allow somebody to take Jesus away from you, then they are taking away your birthright. They are taking away your power. That ain't even in my notes, but the Holy Spirit just told me to get that to you in that terminology so that you can understand it. Let's rock with it. But here's what I want you to remember, and I want you to write this down, and I really, really want you to hold this in. I really want you to think about this. If you allow yourself to be made useless and no good, Because when you lose Jesus, I hate to say it, or you allow somebody to change your mind state, or you allow your influences to be twisted. Mm -hmm. Somebody outside my window, y'all. You are now allowing yourself to be made useless and no good. Mm -hmm. Capitalize that phrase, no good. Because the second you've been to somebody else's will, you are no good. You are useless. You are pathetic. You are a waste of human space. I hate to be so blunt and honest, but that's what it is. That ain't only the Bible. That's Jesus. We'll find out about that in, 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 in the next series called The Book of Thomas. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, now, here's the verse of the day. So I really want you to highlight this one. I want you to keep this one to yourself. I want you to really take this one in. 
Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Mm -hmm. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase his learning. Now, I know you're asking yourself, why is this important? Let me break this down for you. A wise person understands that they don't know everything. Just like I want you to know that you don't know everything. I don't know everything. That's why I don't get up here and act like I'm holier than thou. You are going to make mistakes. That's a part of life. We are all going to slip and we are all going to fall. But what I want you to understand is, my beautiful people, is that a wise man knows that any knowledge that he attains from anybody... A drunken fool, a crackhead. They are all life lessons. They are all tools and things that he will use to make his circumstance and his situation better. Mm -hmm. I want you to remember that. But then look at it. It says, if you teach a righteous man, he will increase his learning. So if you teach a man that is on the path for trying to do right and a man that is truly about himself and trying to improve himself. What he's going to do is he is going to increase his knowledge. Mm -hmm. He understands that he is imperfect, but he's righteous because he got Jesus. Yeshua. If you want to look at Jesus' Hebrew name. Or what his name is in Hebrew and not the English name. He is always going to learn. Therefore, he is always going to become better. He is going to increase his property. He is going to increase his money. He is going to increase his circumstance. He is going to increase his joy. He is going to increase his happiness. He is going to increase his love of himself. He is going to increase everything that is about him. Now, here's a few things I want you to do this week, and then I'm out. First, I want you to set yourself free from all the BS and messed up influences. I just want you to look. Take you a seven-day phase. You ain't got to do like me. I, I've been on a 30-day phase. I want you to really, really, really focus on this. And I really want you to, to just take a seven-day phase. If you got a friend that's negative... <laughs> Tell them, you know what, look, it's Monday, look, I'm going to be real busy, I'm doing a fast, and my pastor, my pastor say, I got to cut off some negativity. So, don't even tell them you're going to cut off some negativity. My pastor telling me I got to take a seven day fast. So that means I ain't going to be able to talk on my phone like that, okay, girl? Oh, oh look, homie. You know what, partner? You know what I'm saying? My pastor say I got a seven-day fast. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't going to be able to be on the block like that. You know, I'm going to have to sustain from having sex. You know, I can't drink and smoke weed for seven days. You know what I'm saying? Cut it. And then I want you to open your mind and your heart to the truth and seek it. Meaning... Sit down. Focus your mind on happiness. Focus your mind on thoughts of joy. Focus your mind on everything that is fantastic and great, my beautiful people. Just focus on it. Cleanse yourself of the negativity. <laughs> if you like me and you got family that love bringing negativity, slam your door, put the dead boat on it. And when they look through your window, be like, I see you sitting on the couch. Do this. I don't see you. Niggas and flies. Say that to yourself. Don't say it out loud, though, because you're going to get cut. Um. But then the one thing I want you to do is I want you to talk to Jesus internally. When you cleanse your mind of all of that, I just want you to say in the name of Jesus inside your mind this week, I don't want you to have a verbal prayer at all this week. Don't do it. Don't get on your knees. Don't prostrate yourself. Don't throw yourself on your face. Get all down to the dirt and be sucking up dog hair, doo-doo, dirt, baby boo-boo, crumbs, and everything else. I want you to just have a solid prayer to yourself. Even in the middle of the chaos, I want you to say inside your mind, in the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. Jesus, 
cleanse me. Jesus, restore me. Jesus, give me back my birthright. You understand what I'm telling you, my beautiful people? Mm -hmm. Don't even just, don't even do it to yourself. Live, be happy, and full of joy. Just for a week. And the last thing I want you to do is I want you to tune in for the next upcoming weeks as we um, discover the true teachings of Jesus Christ. These are the secret teachings of Jesus Christ that were uh, restricted by Constantine and the beginning fathers of the modern day Western world of our understanding of Jesus as we dig into the original sayings of Jesus. Now, and I want you to be open-minded. Now, and I stress this and I say, be open to the true teachings because the teachings that are coming out of Jesus' mouth contradict a lot of the religious bull crap that we have been taught today. All right, my beautiful people. I don't like to end a broadcast without giving you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And this does not mean that uh, it's uh, about you going to heaven or hell. Because quite frankly, the choice is yours. Because you can say the prayer all day long, but if you choose not to fully believe it in your heart and in your mind. And write this down while some, you know, the Holy Spirit told me to give you this. My heart and my mind are my everything. Write that down. I want you to repeat this simple prayer after me. And welcome to Team JC. And welcome to becoming enlightened and part of the truth. In the name of Jesus, I come to you in prayer. Father, I accept you as I ask for forgiveness for my sins. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that... um. You forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins. Father, in the name of Jesus, I now confess out of my mouth that Jesus Christ, you are Lord. I know now and I believe with all my heart and soul that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose from the dead. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, my beautiful people. Your boy, Reverend JB, is out for the day. Enjoy yourselves. Live your life. Be happy. Be merry. All right. I'm a holler at you.